Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As always, if you like what I'm doing, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll try to do some more of these as soon as I can. I just need to find some more weird guitars to review. So today is quite special. It's an Ibanez Paul Stanley PS10. And as Paul Stanley said, it's the Rolls Royce compared to the Chevy of the ordinary Iceman. So before I get started on this guitar, let's have a little bit of history about why this guitar came about. Now back in the 70s, Ibanez and Greco and Fujigen were Japanese manufacturers and Japan had had a bit of a reputation for cheap and cheerful guitars. But by around 1975, this, this really wasn't the case anymore. They were just as good as the American counterparts. And if you remember back in the 70s, some of the Gibsons from that time were, were pretty bad. I mean, they were incredibly heavy and the fit and finish just was nowhere near as good as the 60s models. So anyway, Ibanez and Greco and Fujijen got together and decided, well, we don't want to make copies of Fenders and Gibsons anymore. We want our own shapes and we want some really interesting shapes. And so the first one they came up with in 1975 was the Ibanez Artist 2663. And it was also marketed as the Mirage under the Greco band brand. So what happened? Along came Paul Stanley of KISS and he was looking for a new sponsor for his guitars. And he spotted this Ibanez Artist 2663 and he made some comments about his really strange looking guitar. And if you actually look at the photo, it is a bit strange. It has this four way tone selector switch and a, and a strange looking pickup. But he saw the potential in it. So they took this artist guitar and made some modifications. And eventually they came up with this, the PS10. Now the PS10 is, as Paul Stanley said, it's really quite a Rolls Royce of a guitar. It has some very expensive accoutrements and it's beautifully finished. You immediately notice the mirroring on here, but also the cream and abalone inlay that goes all the way around. You've got abalone and ivory uh, fret markers. You also have really good V2 pickups. The bridge is a Gibraltar style bridge with its uh, underneath there is a, a block for sustain and you have a Gibraltar style uh, tailpiece as well that's been modified specifically for this model. Um, some great feeling tone knobs, you have two volumes and a master tone knob and the body's mahogany. It has a rock maple uh, neck, a three part rock maple neck and on the 1980 model, which is the 1980 here, it has um, a, an ebony fretboard. Previous models actually had rosewood uh, that had been polished, but this from 1980 to 81, uh, it was ebony. In fact, these were only made from 1978 to around 1981 or 1977, they were first introduced, but they were only made in low numbers, so you could only really get them from 78. Um, so it had a quite short period. Um, it was later revived, I think as a PS120, or, and there were some other versions, but the, the PS10 is the real deal. That's the one you want if you're going to collect one of these. And it is of far superior quality to the later ones. It really, as Paul Stanley said, is a Rolls Royce or a guitar. Um, I've had this one for about five or six years now. Um, I haven't really seen any others come up, so they must be pretty rare pieces. Um, this one's in pretty fair condition. It's got a few dings on it, as you would expect, and as you can see, the the binding here is yellowed quite substantially. I don't know whether because it was played in a smoking environment or whether it's just naturally aged that colour. Um, what else can I say? Um, really nice tuners, or high quality tuners. Um, as I said, these V2 pickups are, are great for, for rock, they really do snarl. Um, and quite straightforward in terms of controls. It's a just a standard three-way selector like a Les Paul selector switch and the same sort of uh, you know, bridge, neck and both together. There's no call split or anything like that on this guitar. So that's it. Uh, as I said, you know, it's a, an interesting episode in Japanese guitar manufacturing. It's one of the first Japanese guitars that really 
has been associated with a global rock star and shown the quality of these guitars. Paul Stanley himself would play one of these, a PS10 on stage. Um, obviously he'd have it, some slight adjustments for himself, but it was essentially the PS10 model that he played. Um, so if it's good enough for him, I think it's good enough for us. Anyway, I'll plug it in now and take it through a few sounds. Uh, and in the meantime, as I said, if you like what I do, please give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.